Hey everybody, welcome back. In the next series of videos, I'd like to cover linear transformations and what effect these have on statistics like the average, the variance, and the covariance. And what I mean by linear transformation is you've got some data and let's say it's in, uh, in Fahrenheit and you need to convert it into Celsius. And that usually involves adding something and multiplying by something. So like the bread and butter of a straight line is the intercept and the slope, it's A plus MX. And so you're adding something and multiplying something to get your new variable. This kind of thing comes up all the time because we are transforming units. So we are switching from, from Fahrenheit to Celsius or from you know uh, inches to centimeters. And uh, it also comes up a lot in finance because we're going to look at what happens when you uh, not only multiply and add variables, uh, add something to a variable, but what if you're adding another variable? So a linear combination of variables as well. In finance, that comes up because you might uh, invest not just in one stock, which has its own variance, but in a handful of you know, two, three, 50 different stocks, each of which have uh, different covariances. And uh, in your portfolio, they have different weights. So you might have 100 shares of IBM, but 1,000 shares of Apple. And so that's a weighted linear combination of, of different random variables. So this stuff comes up over and over. Uh, we'll take it step by step. We're going to look at um, five different uh, videos in this massive theme in statistics. Uh, this will be our first uh, stab at it. These are all the topics that we're going to cover in this series of videos. Today, we're going to do the first of these, which is what happens to the expected value or the average of a variable if we're adding and multiplying things to it. Let's dive right in. So let's say you've got some random variable, it's x, and uh, you've, got, you've got observations on this guy. So you've got, let's say, you know, five different, uh, different observations, or, or, or maybe even more than that, uh, on, on some random variable x. So let's say uh, it's test scores. And uh, or these maybe quizzes or something like that, or maybe these are you know all the students in a class, and one student got a 70, a 60, a 50, a 90, and an 80. And you might want to know like what's the average of all the test scores. So sometimes that is denoted x bar if this is a sample. Sometimes this is denoted with a mu, or maybe even mu sub x if we're talking about a population. Uh, for the next set of videos, I want to introduce you to this notation, which is E of x. And this is just the expectation or the expected value of some random variable x. So it's just uh, an average, but this kind of functional notation, you know, like an f of x kind of notation, is going to be useful. So let's say that you've got all of these uh, scores in class and your teacher is wondering whether they should curve. Now there's a couple different ways of curving. You could, let's say, take x and add 5 points to it. So x plus 5. Uh, you could even um, increase everybody's score by 10% and then add 5 points to it. The curve is usually some kind of linear transformation like this. And I guess our question is, if we apply this transformation to all of these data points, right, if this becomes 77 plus 5, which is, what is that? That's 82. And if this becomes 66 plus 5, which is 71, and 55 plus 5, which is 60, if we do that to all of these scores, what's the new average? what is the expected value of 5 plus 10% of x? So that's the question that we're going to address today. The expected value of any variable x is just the average. So it's going to be useful to just think in terms of the formula for an average. You take each observation, each score here, and you add them up, and then you divide by the total number of, of exams. So let's apply the same idea 
let's bring that n to some place more convenient. So let's apply this formula to the transformed score, so the transformed variable. So in other words, what is the expectation of this 5 plus 1.10x? So we just plug in this in for x up here. So it's the sum of a plus b x, all of these, and then we divide by n. Now this is just an exercise in addition. The summation sign can sometimes be a little bit confusing for students, so I might be switching in and out of you know, expanding that summation sign to a bunch of, of summations. Yeah, let's do that right now. So we would have, for example, a plus b x1 for the first score, plus a plus b x2 for the second score, all the way through to the last score that we had. And then we add all of these transformed ones up and divide by n. All right, now we can, uh, you know, we're just adding stuff here, so I don't really need those parentheses. And how many of these a's do I have? Well, I have one, two, dot, 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 all the way through to n. So I have n of these. So a plus a plus dot, 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 plus a. I've got n of these guys. Plus bx1, bx2, dot, 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 bxn. And then again, don't forget, we're dividing through by n. Now, if we have n of these a's, then that's just n a. Right? If we had three of them, that would be 3a, a plus a plus a. So n a plus all of these b's. I'm not going to rewrite that. Now notice that I can split this fraction up and then cancel the ends. So we have Na plus Bx1 plus dot dot dot. We can just split up that fraction and then the ends cancel. So this is a nice simplification. So we have here A plus Bx1 bx2 all the way through bn, oops, bx sub n. And now only that last part is divided by n. So this is definitely simpler. Let's keep simplifying and see if we can't simplify this fractional part. So we have a plus, and then we've got this massive thing all divided by n. Now notice that b shows up in every single term inside the parentheses. So we can pull that outside of the parentheses, leaving us with just x1 plus x2 plus dot 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 xn. Okay, now let me write this in just a slightly different way. Just to make the punchline a little bit more obvious. What's that term in brackets? Does that look familiar? It should look like an average. Right? The average is just x1 plus x2 plus all the way through xn and then we divide by n. So this term in brackets is equal to this term in brackets, which is just the expectation of x. So what did we just prove? The expectation of the linear transformed variable can be calculated like this. Okay, now uh, what does that mean? Let's clear the screen and we'll, uh, we'll continue. So we just proved that if you have some data on x, 
but you multiply it by something and maybe add it by something and you want to know the average of this guy, you can apply this formula. So in our example with the test scores, we had um, some original average. I don't think we specified that. Let's say it was really low and it was, uh, it was 60%. And then we considered a curve. We considered adding five points and we considered multiplying the original number by 10%, so increasing the score by 10%. In our new score, our transformed test scores, were 5 plus the 10% of the original score. And then the question the teacher wants to know is, or I guess all the students want to know is, what is the new average going to be? What does applying this curve do to test scores? So we can see that the, the expectation of our new test scores is just going to be A plus B expectation of X. So that's just going to be 5 plus 1, 0, the expectation of X, which was 60. So 5 plus 66 is 71. So this would be a way for your professor or your teacher to increase the test scores and you can easily calculate what the new average would be just by applying this formula. So your professor could play around with all kinds of different combinations of A and B to yield a particular um, new average. Now there's all kinds of different combinations of A and B that would switch 60 over to 71. Uh, and those will affect the variance. And so that's going to be the next video that we're going to look at. For concreteness, let's just do one more example. Let's say that instead of, of this data, we had some random variable X that had an average of 100. Oops. So the expected value of our original variable was 100. And we're considering um, creating a new variable that's a transformation of our original x variable. Uh, maybe we're going to do 10 plus 3x. What is the average or the expected value of this new variable? Okay, so let's look at this formula here. We can basically move this expectation operator through the linear transform. So it's like you're going to apply this expectation operator linearly. Now the expected value of a constant, just a number, 5 or 10 or something, is just the original number. The expected value of scaling your original number is just your scaling factor times the original average. And so that's where you get your, your new formula. So we can just apply this procedure to this scenario. What is the expected value of our transformed variable? Well, the expectation of 10 is just 10 because it's not even a variable. It's a constant. It doesn't vary. And then we would have 3 times the expected original expected value. So that's 10 plus 3 times 100. Or in other words, 10 plus 300, 310. If we had some variable, let's give it a different name this time. Let's call it a random variable z is equal to 200. And you wanted to construct some new random variable, let's call it w, just for, for kicks, that's 2 plus 1 half of z. What's the expected value of, uh, what's the expected value of our transformed variable if the original variable had an average of 200? We would just say 2 plus 1 half the original average. 
So 2 plus 1 half of 200. Half of 200 is 100. So that average comes out to 102. So I think it's pretty straightforward to figure out what the average is of a new variable if it's a linear transform of an older variable. Um, so that's it for this video. Um, the next video is going to show us what happens to the variance of this nice new transformed variable. So um, check it out. Thanks for listening.